So in this video, we're just going to kind of run over the basics of the Anaconda enclosure, uh, functionality, equipment, dimensions, basically everything. And then we'll move on to the reticulated python enclosure to the left of it, finally, in the next video. So for starters, we're going to go over dimension and water volume. So it is 10 feet long from side to side, 6.5 feet deep from front to back or wide, and then five and a half feet tall from top to bottom. Uh, then the water volume is around 300 gallons, a little more usually at that water level there, and can be filled up to the top, I guess, if you want, but that would be 400 some gallons, but we allow for water displacement by giving that little wiggle room there as she goes in and out of the water. Uh, it rises and lowers, especially as she'll get bigger and more girthy and more mass. Uh, she's already 16 foot and over, well over 100 pounds, so she's got some growing to do yet, but at the same time, she does displace quite a bit of water already. Uh, we'll start with the way we change the water now. There's a little drain, as we can see, a two inch uh, pipe led from the bottom of the water down to a shutoff valve with two unions, one on either side, to easily change and repair it. If need be, uh, it's more easily repaired. There's just little O-rings that switch out. Then that all leads to the uh, floor drains water basin, which as the water fills up in here, the pressure pushes down faster and actually drains the water quicker uh, than if it were to say down here. So at the very end, it drains slow, but in the beginning, this thing basically empties in about five minutes. Uh, the other pipes you see there are for the other enclosures that lead to this same floor drain. And then here's our beginning of the filtration system as a bucket filter, which is just equipped with a mostly biological filtration, and actually only. And then it also does have some mechanical from what that allows, and the particles it does stop. So there's a little mechanical in there by, not by uh, choice or on purpose, but it's a good thing to have anyway. It allows that stuff to be turned into food for the biological nitrogen, nitrifying bacteria. Anyway, there's the biological filtration leading to the UV sterilizer over here, which is a nice feature of a quartz sleeve wiper. So you don't have to take the whole thing apart to clean it. And then that all goes up to the top of the very tip top tank up here into the algae scrubbing system which has two really strong grow lights and a screen for the algae to grow on. This is actually where I want to clean it. So it's going to be cleaned fairly shortly after the video. Hey, this is easily removed with this little union here. You just turn the filter off, unscrew this, and take this off and scrape it with a little card of sorts. Uh, there's also a 500 watt aquarium heater in here that Heats the whole body of water to around 81, 82. We're at about 82 degrees at the moment, which is nice, optimal. And that all drains gravity fed into this pipe, which leads back to the water basin itself. All right, so there's 300 some gallons of water and the anaconda who's about 16 foot and a little over 100 pounds or somewhat over 100 pounds. I can actually weigh her but she's pretty heavy and I've seen other 16 footers that are well over 100 some pounds. So I'm kind of guessing there. So the water's kept clean by those methods, water changes and filtrations and absorption from the algae and whatnot. Then it's heated with starting with a backup ambient heater that kind of only kicks on at night or when there's a power outage, it'll kick on too because the shortwave infrared heater, as you can see that red glowing thing actually, uh, when a power outage happens or a shortage, it turns off and needs to be reset with a little remote. And then that kicks on as a result through a little system I set up, which I'll actually just show you right now while we're on the topic. So once the power goes out, the uh, control system refreshes. It turns on this, which hits that switch in there. And it, this is the uh, cord to the ambient heater, the radiant heat panel. And then we'll talk about the... Uh, Infrared heater. So it used to be two halogen bulbs, 80 watt par 38 floodlights, lamps, whatever, and uh, of this brand. This is actually a, a dead bulb, only one that actually died on me, too. So they last, this brand lasts pretty long, whereas this, another brand I tried actually 
I was replacing them left and right. So I'm not going to be got, getting that one, but I like Setco. Then here are, is our, well actually, while we're on the topic, these uh, will be used in other enclosures, such as the reticulated python enclosure, who's a cryptid basker, as well as likes it a little cooler somewhat than the open basking uh, anacondas, who just kind of, they like more warmer water. They fall in the Ferguson zone two instead of Ferguson zone one, where the retics are. Kind of nice, nice switcheroo. Anyway, this is the uh, infrared heater that uh, creates a wide basking area over that entire side of the land. Kind of stops there too, it doesn't really touch the water much, although the water is heated by that aquarium heater. Uh, two lights here you see in lamps are just for ambient light and to create a more of a, a sunlight feature, fixture, glowy thing. Uh, makes it nice to notice the area where the basking site is, both for the animal and the viewer. And then we have the ambient light around the entire thing, which are just some shop lights with some white light. Uh, altogether, it works pretty well. And yeah, uh, I'm just missing a nice log wood feature that I'm thinking from there to there, but it has to fit through that door, which has been an issue somewhat as well as finding the right piece that kind of fits the entire thing and kind of complements it as well. I think we covered everything in this, so so next video should be uh, the reticulated python enclosures I'm very uh, excited about, and I'm about to finish plumbing after I clean this algae scrubber here. All right, well, here's Spot and I saying, signing off and saying, see you later. <laughs>